Your computer's memory, also called RAM or random access memory, is used to hold the information that the computer is working on. When you power the computer on, it reads all the information needed to start Windows from the hard disk into memory. Once Windows is loaded, the computer loads any programs or files you open from the hard drive into memory. The reason for this is the computer's memory, or RAM, is hundreds of times faster than the computer's hard drive. This allows the computer to perform faster. The more memory your computer has, the more programs and files can be opened at once. For most computers, 2 gigabytes is more than enough. If you plan to do a lot of picture or video editing, you should consider getting 4 gigabytes or more of RAM, since these types of applications take up more memory than typical programs. The 32-bit versions of Windows XP, Vista, and Windows 7 can only see 3.5 gigabytes of RAM. The 32-bit versions of Windows will work in a system with more than 3.5 gigabytes of RAM, but you won't be able to use the extra memory. If you need to actually use more than 3.5 gigabytes of RAM, you will have to install the 64-bit version of Windows Vista or Windows 7. There is a 64-bit version of XP, but you should avoid using it. Windows XP 64 has a lot of compatibility issues with programs and hardware. See Lesson 2 of the Computer Setup Lessons for choosing the 64-bit version of Windows Vista or 7. There are currently two types of RAM used in computers today. The older type, which has been around for six years, is called DDR2. The newest type, which is becoming more prevalent, is called DDR3. DDR3 is able to run at higher speeds and therefore higher bandwidths. We'll go into speed and bandwidth in a moment. Keep in mind that most motherboards support either DDR2 or DDR3, so make sure the motherboard you buy supports the type of DDR you'll be using. Memory comes in the form of a stick that attaches to the computer's motherboard through a memory slot. The memory stick is actually made up of several individual memory chips that when added up, combine to create the storage capacity of the memory stick. Memory sticks come in capacities of 512 megabytes and 1, 2, 4, or 8 gigabytes. For more on motherboards, see the motherboard component lesson or the installation lessons. The speed of the RAM is also important. The speed of memory is measured in megahertz, or MHZ, and ranges from 400 megahertz to 2000 megahertz or 2 gigahertz and up. Generally, you should get the fastest RAM the motherboard you choose can handle. Another measurement of RAM speed is called CAS. It's measured in nanoseconds or NS and comes in speeds of 3 to 7 nanoseconds for DDR2 RAM and between 6 and 10 nanoseconds for DDR3 RAM. A lower CAS is better, but unless you're building a high-end system, it's probably not worth paying extra for the lower CAS. Here's a breakdown of RAM types, their common names, and the speeds they run at. With both DDR2 and DDR3, the name refers to the bandwidth the memory has. So PC2-9600 can move 9600 megabytes of data per second. To convert from bandwidth to the speed of RAM, you either multiply or divide by 8. So if you want to find the speed of PC2-9600 RAM, divide by 8, and you get 1200, or 1200 MHz, which is the actual speed of PC2-9600 DDR2 RAM. To go from speed to bandwidth, you multiply by 8. This is useful to know when you're shopping for RAM and motherboards, since some shops list only speed, and other shops list only bandwidth. By multiplying or dividing by 8, you can be sure a motherboard can support the RAM you buy. When you buy RAM for your new computer, we recommend getting two sticks of DDR2 or DDR3 memory, at least 1 GB in size with the same specifications, for a total of 2 GB. Since most motherboards have four available slots to add memory, you'll have two more slots available for adding memory in the future should you need to. The reason for using two sticks of memory is so that you can enable dual channel on the motherboard. Dual channel combines the two sticks of memory to double their bandwidth and increase the speed at which the RAM is accessed. 
Intel Socket 1366 motherboards support triple channel memory, which triples the memory bandwidth and requires three sticks of memory. More on this in a moment. Dual channel support is standard on just about every motherboard made today. The motherboard will detect the matched set of RAM sticks and enable dual channel automatically. See Installation Lesson 2 or your motherboard manual to make sure dual channel is enabled. If you want to add more memory in the future, you can add another set of matched memory sticks to keep dual channel active. Intel Socket 1366 first generation Core i7 CPUs and motherboards with Socket 1366 can use the new triple channel DDR3 memory kits. These motherboards have six RAM slots, so you can install three RAM sticks and still have three more memory slots available to add memory in the future and keep triple channel enabled. Intel will release a new Socket 2011 later in 2011 that supports quad channel DDR3 memory. One more thing about dual, triple, and quad channel memory. To make sure the RAM sticks are well matched to each other, it's best to buy kits of RAM that say they support dual, triple, or quad channel configurations. This will ensure the RAM is stable and won't cause errors or crashes. If you're planning to try overclocking the RAM, you might also look at the voltage rating of the RAM. Overclocking means running the RAM faster than it's meant to be run to get more performance. The standard voltage of DDR2 RAM is 1.8 volts, and you can find RAM that will run at up to 2.4 volts. The standard voltage for DDR3 RAM is 1.5 volts, and you can find RAM that will run at up to 2 volts. With Intel's first generation Core i7 CPUs, the RAM voltage is limited to 1.65 volts. On second generation Core i7s and i5s, the RAM voltage is limited to 1.6 volts. And on Core i3 CPUs, the RAM voltage is limited to 1.5 volts. To overclock the RAM, you'll be increasing its speed using settings in the motherboard's BIOS and upping the voltage of the RAM to keep the system stable and working. See the overclocking video lessons on the website for instructions on how to overclock your RAM. Keep in mind that overclocking the RAM will increase heat, so look for RAM with built-on heat sinks, also called heat spreaders, if you plan to overclock the RAM. When you purchase your computer's memory, look for two 1 GB as a minimum DDR2 or DDR3 sticks in a package to enable dual channel on the motherboard. If the motherboard you're using supports triple channel memory, Get a minimum of three 1 GB DDR3 sticks in a package. Get the fastest megahertz memory the motherboard you choose can handle. Buy the lowest CAS RAM you can afford. And look for higher voltage support if you plan to overclock. In the installation lessons, we'll go over how to install the memory sticks onto the motherboard.